Although I like to joke that I, I got to call myself a rocket scientist because I was working at JPL. I wasn't actually working on anything space related. I was working with an Earth science group called the Cryosphere Group. They are studying one small part of the Earth system science, and that is they are studying exactly how Greenland and Antarctica are melting. <laughs> The, the greatest sources of sea level rise are the melting Greenland and, and Antarctic ice sheets. So, I mean, most of us are familiar already that the North Pole is melting, but the North Pole, the ice on the North Pole is and was floating. And floating ice, when it melts, I mean, it's tragic for the polar bears, very tragic for the polar bears, but f when floating ice melts, it doesn't change sea level. If you want to change sea level, you have to take ice that's currently on land, melt it, and then the water from the ice on land flows into the ocean and, and raises sea level. Greenland and Antarctica are the two, by far, the two largest sources of land-based ice. And as they melt, sea level is rising. So the mandate of this group is to predict how much sea level will rise by the year 2100. So right now, all we can tell you is that sea level by the year 2100 will rise somewhere between six inches and six feet, right? So it's like between six inches and six, it's an enormous error, enormous amount of error. So right now we know that the ice is melting at a phenomenal rate, uh, but we don't know how that rate is going to change. So in order to predict 85 years from now, by 2100, how much sea level will rise, we have to have an accurate predictive model for how this melt is going to accelerate. One of the biggest factors that we have that, that's missing in the physics is we, we don't know exactly how fast the ice flows as it melts. The ice is full of cracks, but when the sun beats down on the Antarctic ice sheet, the, the ice on the surface melts, and that surface water flows down through cracks in the ice to the bottom of the glacier. Now when it reaches the bottom of the glacier, we all know that ice floats. So when that water filters down to the bottom of the glacier, it actually lifts the glacier a little bit and makes it flow faster. That's bad for global warming, right? Now the, the thing is, is that the model that we're using does not currently account for that. So whatever predictions we have right now are optimistic because we know that the ice will actually, in reality, flow faster than our current model is saying. There are several physical processes known to be important that are not yet in the model. And all of them are gonna make things worse. So the more realistic our models get, the worse the prediction is gonna be. That's why right now our models say six inches, but it's probably gonna be closer to six feet. So the physics simulator is written by the, you know, the cryosphere scientists. I tried to help, uh, but I'm not good enough. I, I couldn't figure out enough to help them there. So in the end, what I ended up doing is, is I've done uh, more, uh, more data analysis. Myself and my students are now working to create better user interfaces to put in front of the code. And more importantly, actually, we, we've begun to realize that we really need to have a much better outreach program. We need to be able to educate people much better in you know, what's causing global warming. One of the students who came to me saying he wanted to work with the Global Warming Project, um, we, we, we talked for a while to figure out how he could fit, and he, he mentioned, oh, you know, by the way, I wrote this really cool phone app that tracks satellites. He pulled out his phone and showed me this app that he wrote. It downloads data from NASA on all the current orbits of satellites, and it tracks satellites on the phone. I was like, perfect. We now have a phone app so that anyone with a phone can interact with the physics model. And you can, you can play around you, on the phone, you can say, well, what happens if the temperature rises at you know, one, one degree every 10 years? How is that going to affect the model? And you, this phone will contact the physics model, say, okay, here's the physics we're gonna assume, go. Tell me what's gonna happen in the next 50 years. And an answer will come back and you'll be able to see the results on your phone in minutes. There's also a phone app that we're working on that will show you exactly how sea level will rise because not only we wanna compute how much sea level rise is going to occur, but we also want to do things like look at the coast of Long Beach or Newport Beach right nearby. How will the coastline change if sea level rises by three feet, right? Half of, Long, half of the beach on Long Beach is gonna be underwater. There's a lot of 
really local results, bad stuff that's gonna happen. We want to have it to the point where anyone with a phone can start to play with global warming, play with the parameters, play with the model, and see for themselves how driving more you know, electric cars might help save the Earth.